Yes. Yes. Okay. Hello, everybody, guys. This is Eugene. Uh, we're going to start our training in five minutes. Okay. Hello, everybody, guys. Let me welcome you on the second day of the oral commerce training uh, today. Our plan for today is to check themes and layouts. Let me share my screen. Yeah, so before we will start, let me remind you that yesterday we have checked uh, the storefront and website topics where we have seen how to uh, work with the website, especially if you have uh, enterprise version application with the multiple websites. Uh, how to organize your storefront, what is the prefix on the URL, what is the difference between the storefront management console and some other topics. And then we have checked the customer entities topic where we have seen uh, what's the difference between customer and customer users, what are customer user roles, how they're organized together and how uh, they can be used to restrict access to the specific parts of the storefront. Today, our topics for today is the layout and themes. In scope of this topic, we are going to see uh, what uh, what are themes in Aura Commerce, uh, how they can be used to customize visual and uh, functional features of the application, and uh, what is layout engine and how to use layout engine to render your blog, so even form a completely uh, new structure for every page. So, uh, if there are no questions at the moment, let us uh, start our today's topic. So, themes and layouts. We're going to start from themes, and before we will do that, so we need to understand what is theme in Aura Commerce and how it uh, how it is uh, affects the visual presentation of our application. So, theme basically is just a skin skin that you can use on the uh, application storefront and you can switch between skins depending on some kind of configuration. And uh, everything you're seeing on the storefront is in fact a part of the theme which is used to uh, render the page. Uh, theme may include uh, styles like CSS or CSS, may include JS and uh, we can see it later. Uh, we, theme may also affect some functional features we are adding or removing some block using the layouts. Uh, theme may override page parts. So this is the part where we are going to check, uh, part we are going to check during the layout, uh, in the layout topic. And uh, theme may have a parent theme. So again, we have here inheritance. Uh, Oracle Commerce provides several default themes and uh, it's recommended to just use one of these themes as a parent theme to not implement everything from scratch because uh, time is expensive and it's better to use what we have out of the box than of the writing everything from scratch. Uh, theme can be defined both at the global and website configuration. We have seen uh, yesterday already, but we can check it today one more time. And one more thing to avoid misunderstanding. So in Aura Commerce, there is a configuration section called Aura Theme. And this configuration section is used to define the backend theme management console theme while the theme used on the storefront defined under the or layout sections. We're going to see the sections several times uh, today, but in general, if you will see the or theme and configure ML file, please remember this is a management consoles or backend theme. Now let us have a look at the website configuration and see how to set a theme from the UI. I will, let me open the application. Today I will use application in dev mode mostly because I will need to show it uh, how themes works and how layout works. But it works exactly the same both on the, in the uh, production environment and dev environment. So let me log in. And theme can be set at the global configuration. So if you're using a uh, community edition of Aura Commerce, this is uh, the only place where you can uh, set your theme. Here you see the default theme option. And you may also uh, customize the theme 
on the website level. For example, let me open European website. Find the theme section here. And as you can see here, we're using custom theme. Just let me remind you that uh, that the uh, European theme looks a little bit different from the default. Uh, European site looks a little bit different from the default site. So here we have a default site from the uh, or commerce e, e local domain name. And if I will put here European Union subdomain, uh, we can see the different websites. And so you can see it looks very different. So here we have menu on the left side. Here we have a uh, header uh, with a blue background. Here we have a uh, different font all over the page. So all these changes are part of the custom theme. And if I will change it to the default theme back, it will be changed on the uh, storefront too. But for now, for the uh, this training, I will keep it here just to show you a difference between these two themes. Uh, theme can be set from the UI, and so this is the most obvious configuration how you can do it. And theme also can be set uh, in the config.yml file under the orally out active uh, theme, so this is the lowest level. Uh, theme has to be defined in the theme YAML file. So this is basically the place to create your own theme and uh, use it. And you can also use theme manager and all layout extension files in order to understand how themes are set and how themes are managed. Let us have a look at these files. So first, let's check the theme manager. So as you can see here, we have a theme manager, which has instances of themes which can be used. We have here theme factory, which is basically used as a factory to create a themes. And we have theme definition back, which is pretty much just a configuration for the required theme. So for example, here we can see that we get theme method, which can return you a theme object, which captures all information about the theme. And here we are checking that this theme is defined or not. And if it's not defined yet, we are asking theme factory to create an instance and passing configuration from the, our, our definition from our definition back, but definition is uh, just a configuration in our case. And then we can more additional information which may be used there too. Uh, the second file, the oral layout extension is used to set theme. And here we can see active theme is set in the uh, system, in the dependency injection configuration parameter called or layout dot default active theme. And if you're using a dependency injection container and you need the active theme, you can either uh, use this parameter or get it directly from the system configuration. Uh, pay attention that here, we will have uh, the parameter which is set in the Oro config YAML. So this is the uh, uh, lowest parameter. Uh, while in fact, different websites may have a uh, different configuration. And uh, in these websites, you may have access to different values. So if you're not sure, or whether if you're using enterprise version and you have multiple websites, it's better to uh, get the theme from the system configuration just to be sure that it will be uh, the current theme configuration for the current website. Uh, then we have the theme definition. So theme definition, we have seen it already uh, in the theme manager. Theme definition is just an array with the uh, configuration options for the theme. And as, as I have already mentioned before, the theme may have a parent theme. So we can have a uh, hierarchy here and let us have a look how it looks like. So first here we have a quick start for creating a theme and uh, talking about the theme, you have to know that theme is created in the, uh, under this path and the main file which is used to create a theme called theme.yml, which has to be stored under resources, views, layouts, then your theme name, in our case it's the first theme, and uh, then the file has to be called theme.yml. Then we have label, we have parent, because most of the themes are inherited from uh, other themes and here we have from default theme, and groups commerce. Groups commerce is needed to identify theme as a storefront theme, so it can be used in the uh, storefront. So this I have mentioned, this is uh, the way how you can uh, active, uh, 
activate your theme or rather mark it as a default theme. But again, you can use it with the system configuration too. And here we have additional options which tell us how to uh, add assets. For example, here we have logo and colors assets. And talking about uh, layout updates, we're going to see them a little bit later. And here is the configuration for the custom theme. So let me remind you the custom theme is the theme we have currently on the, our European website. And this is it. So we have uh, parent theme default, we have label custom theme, we have custom theme description. The description is used just to provide additional information about what your theme uh, is used for. And groups is used to tell that this is in fact a storefront theme, not a just a, uh, some kind of uh, abstract theme. So application will know it has to be used on the storefront only. So uh, our commerce out of the box provides three different themes, blank, default, and uh, custom. Let's check them one by one. So a uh, blank theme is defined in the UI bundle and blank theme is how you can uh, guess from the name is a uh, very, very basic and very, very standard theme without any UI features, without visual representation, without some kind of nice styling. It's just uh, blank, uh, not blank. It's uh, just empty page with the minimum amount of features and uh, the minimum amount of uh, code reading in order to uh, make our commerce application works. Let us check how it looks like. So I'm going to set it for the default website. In order to do that, I have to go to the management console. And set it on the website level. I might set it on globally, but for in our case, I'm going to set it only for the default level, only for the default website. So here I'm going to switch to the blank theme. Save it. And now if I will click F5 and refresh the page, you can see that structure has changed significantly. So here we can uh, see a totally different menu. We can see total different representation of the product listing. We see totally different styling, but still all the features are still usable. You can still see the menu here. You can still see menu on top. You can still see the links to uh, signing in register, they just look uh, very, very simple. And this is a great place where uh, you as a developer can start on uh, creating your uh, custom theme uh, from create custom theme using the default theme as a template. Next theme uh, is the default theme. And this is the theme we have already seen. Let me switch to the default theme. So this is the default theme, the standard uh, yellow, gray, and uh, blue theme, which you can use for the demo purposes, which you can use on the early stage of your application, and uh, which you can use, for example, if you are pretty happy with it and you need to customize only logo. In this case, you can still use the theme. And the custom theme, the final theme is, here it is, it's defined in the custom bundle, custom theme bundle. So this is that nice blue theme we have seen for the year in the European website. Let me open it again. Yeah, so this is a custom theme. Uh, we will talk a little bit uh, about custom theme a little bit later when we're going to check what kind of features we have out of the box to work with. So how to set a theme? So the first and the most obvious way is via the config config ML file. We have seen it already in the documentation, but just in case, you can always go to the config ML file and find here our layout section. I think we don't have it in this specific place, so we have it somewhere in the our layout bundle, but you as the developer may put or they should even put it here in this file. Uh, then you can say theme via the system configuration. We have done this several times. It can be done for the global level or the website level. And finally, uh, the most convenient way for the people who are customizing application a lot is the config manager. So you can create an installation fixture and every time your time application is installed or deployed, for example, on the continuous integration server, uh, the correct theme will be already set using the installation fixture. 
So installation fixture pretty much doing the same thing as we have uh, just done using the user interface. It gets uh, a proper system configuration sections and set proper value. And that's it. If you need to find the option, uh, system configuration option, you may go to the uh, first to the layout uh, to theme uh, configuration here. You may check the name of the field. Uh, this one is called our front-end front-end theme and that's basically will be the name of your option. Uh, if you're curious, you may always find configuration for this option in your front-end bundle. Let me show it to you. So here we have our front-end bundle. Here we have system configuration sections and here we have this front-end theme option. So this is an option responsible for uh, the uh, theme either global or on the website level. And if you want to set it via the uh, installation uh, fixture, you have to use this key to set your theme. Theme is basically just a name we have defined in the theme configuration. So this was the whole information we have about the theme. So as you can see, theme is up pretty simple so uh, and you may think about the theme as a container for the layout updates and this is where we are going to the layouts so what are layouts and why do we need them so layout is a technically a view layer of the MVC of the model view uh, uh, controller pattern and it's used to represent uh, the visual part of the application in our case it's simply renders HTML and it uses it using the tree, tree structure of blocks. So you may think about uh, the HTML as a uh, block. So you may have a tag for each block. And this is what we are trying to do here in Aura with the small difference. We are uh, not creating a block for each tag, but we are allowing to put multiple tags in the same block and use it there. So here we have the basic structure for the uh, layout tree. And here we see the root block, we see the head block, we see the title, meta char set, icon styles blocks. We have the body with the wrapper and uh, page container. We have additional layout JS and so on. So this is the pretty standard, pretty simple structure which is used on every page. And later when we're going to debug the structure, we will able to see how it looks like in the application. Uh, layout contains of blocks. So each of blocks we have seen here may have multiple options. If you can check it here, you will see that they have, in fact, block type, they have block options. Again, we're going to check uh, different types of blocks and different types of options a little bit later. But now you just need to know that uh, each block may have a name, type, and the options. So this is a name, title, this is a block, uh, this is a block type, for example, container, and these are, are the options of this uh, block. This all, this is everything that inf application needs in order to render it properly. Uh, in the end, every block will be converted to the piece of the HTML, and this is the HTML you are receiving on the storefront as a response from the web server. Uh, you may have, uh, may prefer multiple operations with the layout blocks. You may add them, you may move them, you may remove them, you may set options, you may remove options, and that's it. And just in case, here's a reference to the layouts. We're going to check it again, uh, but just in case, you will always have the link here in the slides. So how does it work? So uh, layout, as we have already seen, is a tree. A uh, tree contains of multiple blocks. So this is the visual representation of a very, very simple tree. We have a root block, which is pretty much the container. So everything here is a root. Root is split into the three smaller blocks, header, body, and footer. Header, body, and footer. And the body split on the two other blocks called sidebar and the main content. So. I think you got the idea, you have a tree and tree represents uh, the blocks you have on your page. And every block is just a piece of HTML which will be rendered on your page. Now let's have a look how it's organized on the code level. So due to restructure for the layout is following. 
uh, it's stored in the directory called resources use layout theme. And here the place where we see the connection between the theme and uh, layouts the layouts and layout blocks and layout updates. Every time you are changing something at the storefront, you are changing it in scope of the specific theme. In other words, you cannot have a layout block or layout update or layout structure without a theme. It's always connected to the some theme. Yes, it may be connected to the blank theme, so it means that every child which uses a uh, blank theme, every child theme which uses blank theme as a parent will have this uh, layout, local layout update too. But it still have to be assigned to some theme. So here we have the configuration. This one is for JavaScript. So here is the how you can assign uh, config uh, JavaScript configuration for the specific theme. Yeah, for example, we're using base theme. In order to do that, you have to create a config structure. And by the way, this is the same directory where we can put our assets configuration to. You may have imports. Imports allows you to reuse the same block several times or the same structure several times. So for example, you're rendering a grid and you want to, uh, you want to render each row exactly the same way. In this case, you can simply reuse it and import the same uh, piece of the tree several times. Then we have uh, the page directory. Page directory is used to uh, used for the layout updates, which has to be applied for every page. So, for example, if you need to add a header or footer, and you obviously want to have a header and footer on every page, then you have to put your layout updates to the page directory. And finally, we have a specific directory for route name. So it means that these layout updates will be added only for the specific uh, route, only for the page which represents this route, uh, the Symfony route in Oro. Let's have a look at the example here. I'm going to use custom theme bundle a lot, mostly because it is a special theme added as an example of how theme can be customized. So if you're not sure how to customize the theme, you may always start from custom theme bundle and look at it as an example. Uh, this theme contains, this bundle uh, contains quite a lot of different uh, configuration and customizations which you can do on the storefront. And you can find examples of pretty much all the possible, all the features in this bundle too. So let's start from the theme YAML file. We have seen this one already, so it's a definition for our custom theme. And pay attention that everything is stored in the custom directory. So it means that here we are working with the uh, theme with code custom. And then we have configuration. And here we see two configuration files we have seen already. The first one, the assets. So in our case, it's the SCSS files mostly, which will be dumped later into that, this file. And we have JS modules. So this is a custom JS module specific only for this theme, which will be used uh, when this theme is enabled. Pay attention that there may be other modules defined in the parent theme or parent themes, which in the very end will be merged to the final file too. Then we have import section. So import section allows you to define uh, several combinations, several groups of the layout updates in order to apply them several times on the same page. For now, we need only the names. For example, here we have the customer menu, which can be imported in different places. We have the product grid, it can be imported in different places and so on. And then we have the page directory. So page directory includes layout updates for the uh, which has to be applied for every possible page. For example, here we have configuration for the uh, custom menu, and here we have appropriate template for it. Uh, then we have uh, the appropriate route, which is you can, as you can see, can be used uh, here and there too. For example, here we have a configuration for the uh, shopping list front-end view page. So it's just a view page of uh, the shopping list. And as you can see, this uh, custom theme adds some change to this page in order, for example, to add additional information about the shopping list. So this is the main uh, structure of uh, the theme. You will, work a uh, you will work a lot with the structure. So uh, please remember that you have the imports. It's reusable blocks or reusable parts of the tree. Page, 
this is the uh, layout updates which can be applied to every page and you have routes which can be basically the same layout updates but it, they will be applied only to the specific page uh, defined by the route name. So this directory is a route name. Application will go through all the bundles and try to find uh, layout updates based on the current route name of the current page. Now let's have a look at the layout updates and layout actions. So there are multiple actions you can perform with the blocks and we have already checked, uh, we have already seen one or two and now we are going to see all the possible actions we can do with the layout blocks. So here we have all the actions we can do. We can add a block. So it means they will add a new block to the structure. We can add a tree means they will add a specific tree to the structure. It means that they will add multiple blocks simultaneously. We can remove the block, we can move the block, we can add alias to the block in order to, for example, maintain backward compatibility. We can remove alias. We can work with the options, set, append, subtract, replace, or remove option. We can change block type. So just in case you may all work not only with the uh, options of the block, but also with the block time. You may set the block theme. So pay attention, this is not the application theme. This is a block theme uh, used to render appropriate blocks. And finally, we can clear the state of the uh, layout structure. It means that you will be able to build completely from scratch. Not very commonly used, but in some cases, it uh, might be the best solution. Let's have a look at the examples. So here we have a very simple example of how to add a block. So here we are adding uh, option with the block ID, parent block ID and block type. We can move it, we can remove it and so on. Let's return to our uh, test or custom theme and see what kind of actions we may find in the blocks. So the actions are grouped in the YAML files and all these actions uh, we have seen are called layout updates because they are technically updating the layouts and they stored in the appropriate YAML files. So by default application will simply go through all the YAML files in the appropriate directory and simply load all of them. So for example, here we have a file called uh, main menu YAML responsible for the uh, basically main menu for the custom theme. And here the first action we can see is set block theme. It's uh, very similar to the form themes we have in Symfony. Uh, technically it means uh, that uh, application is going to use this file as a source of the uh, block templates for all blocks defined in this file. So for example, if you want to customize uh, the menu blocks or if you want to change uh, the visual representation of some block, you have to put appropriate uh, information to this file and uh, we can see it a little bit later. And here are the other actions. So for example, here we are moving block WebCatalog block menu to the block parent ID. We can move block categories menu, uh, main menu to the sidebar for the categories list. We can remove block web category menu list. We can remove block main menu container and so on. And talking about that uh, theme file, HTML tweak file, here we can simply overriding the block. So pay attention, this is a standard uh, tweak file without any, anything, any sp uh, special definitions or tags. And here we're simply overriding a block called notification. Widget is just a suffix uh, added to the blocks in order to understand this is a widget for the block. And we are changing the options which were passed and rendering the parent block. So it's some kind of small wrapper, the top of the notification block here. But yeah, as we have already discussed, layout updates is the actions which should be performed with the layout in order to customize the page. Uh, they can update layout restructure, they can update block options, they can import other layout updates, and we are going to to talk about it a little bit later. But for now, here is another example. For example, this is the place we are adding new arrivals at the home page. Let us have a look at the home page. Yeah, so this is our home page, and that block we have just seen is responsible for adding the new arrivals to that page. 
So here we can see we are importing some block. For now let's keep this section. Uh, here we are adding new block called new arrivals product container. We are setting set the options for the block called new arrival products. We are passing some uh, options. For example, here we have option name, option value, uh, appending options, setting options, setting options. So here we are just altering the existing uh, tree structure uh, of our layout in order to uh, perform some customizations or some adjustments. In our case, we are adding new block called new arrivals here. Uh, talking about layout block types. So we have seen already one or two, like block or container, but there are many. In general, layout blocks are very similar to the Symfony form types. So in Symfony you have form types, in order you have block types. In Symfony you have uh, block, um, sorry, uh, form widgets, in order we have block widgets. And so on and so on. And even if you will see the uh, configuration, you will see it's very, very similar to the uh, way Symfony using WordPress form. Block time defines a type of a content. Pay attention, not the content, but type of a content. For example, you may create block for prices and then render it in different uh, places with different prices. So technically it's a type of a content or type of a block, block type, that's why it's called block type, uh, but not the block itself. Uh, block type may have options and you as a developer can uh, specify what kind of options each block expects and it in fact even can be added without a class. Yes, it's possible to do it without class, but it's not a requirement. Let's have a look at how to add your blocks and how to specify the options you may have inside. So this is the uh, couple of the standard blocks we have in Oro. This one is from the product bundle. And these are just a Symfony services which has to be loaded to the Symfony dependency injection container. We have a parent service called oral layout block type extract configurable. And this service is used in order to uh, create new block using the uh, standard template and standard class without writing any PHP code. So what do we have here? Here we have set options config which is a method used to understand the configuration for the specific block. For example, here we have option called collection, which is required. Name of the block type, quick add validation container, and the parent, because blocks also have inheritance, like uh, form types, block types also can be inherited from other block types, and they automatically inherit all the options. And if we'll scroll down, we'll see a little bit more uh, such blocks. For example, here we have product view container block, which has uh, several options. It has parent plot, product product, and product team, and so on and so on. So by doing that, by creating such definition, we are defining a new block type with the appropriate name and appropriate options. And later, this block type can be used in the layout update in order to uh, get options and pass them to the appropriate block in order to render a piece of the HTML. Let's, for example, have a look at one of the blocks. For example, let's check quick order. Uh, for example, here we have quick add form directions and let's check where it is used. I'm going to search uh, through all the oral directory simply because I don't remember exact place. Uh, we need the YAML file. Hmm. Okay, we pick some other block. Uh, product sticker, I think. Yep. So here we have uh, several mentions of the product sticker, but in our case, we're needing to find a block type product sticker. And here we have a good example of such block. So here we have definition of the block, which is block type, and it has three options, mod, stickers, and visible. And if we return to the configuration, we will see here that these are two options. So we have uh, the option called mod with default value icon. We have an option position with default value to write, and we have default option stickers with the empty array. And here we are overriding uh, values of these options. So we can, application can, you, if you will skip this option application with default value, if you will put it here, uh, this value will override the default value. Mm 
Now layout context. Uh, layout context is the first of the two containers which used uh, to pass a data to the layout. So layout context contains all the configuration options for the layout and it's shared between different components of the layout. Uh, pay attention that layout context contains configuration options but not the real data. What's the difference? Uh, the difference is following. So configuration options are sub options which defining the structure. For example, you have configuration option which defines whether you want to render a menu on the left or on the top. This is a configuration option. Or for example, you may have a configuration option which uh, defines whether you want to uh, show advertising on some specific page or not. Again, this is a configuration block. Uh, but for example, if you want to pass specific advertising there or you want to pass the content of the menus, so exact menu items there, this will be not a layout content, this will be an actual data. And does not contain data, means it means that it must not contain actual data which has to be rendered. You may think about it in a different way. Uh, if something should affect the structure of the blocks, it has to be a part of a layout context. If something has to be contained only the way it's rendered, only the data, it's not a part of the layout context, it's part of the data. You may work with the context directly there. So here we have a way to do it via the uh, conditions or via the expressions like that. Context is mobile. And for example, you may use it uh, in the conditions, you may use it in the options, and you may just get this value and pass it as one of the options. So we have seen this one already. So here we have the data, but in fact, you may pass the context. And for example, here we have a great example. Here we have a product theme, which receives its value from the context variable called page detail. Uh, you may also parse a context from the appropriate controller. So uh, if you have a controller and you want it controller to pass some context value to the application, it has to be defined under the add layout, uh, add layout uh, annotation on the appropriate action. So this add layout annotation is something new. This is the uh, invention of Aura and this it's basically replaces add template at the standard symphony. So because we are not using the standard uh, the default let's say, uh, tweak templating engine at the uh, storefront that we are wrapping up, up to the uh, layout tree structure. We are also added a special add layout annotation in order to tell application it must use with it must not use standard structure, it must use a layout structure. Let's have a look how to do it. Here we have the customer user address controller and here we have the uh, index action. And as you can see, we have several uh, context variables we want, which we want to pass to the uh, page. In our case, it's the index page for customer users. So here we have the entity class, we have customer address count, and we have customer user address count. And these options are used to identify how to render a list of the addresses, either as a nice list with the uh, map on the right, if you have less than, as I remember, three addresses, or you want to use as a plain grid if you have more than three uh, addresses because it's more convenient uh, to do it like that. And finally, in order to pass values for these options, you have to return them in the array. So this is the way how we are passing these values. So for example, here we have address provider, get customer user addresses, and simply account from these values. By doing that, these values will be passed to the layout uh, context, and then this layout context can be used, uh, can be passed to options, can be used in the uh, layout updates, uh, can be used in the appropriate uh, blocks, and so on. And there is a second way to do it. So as you have seen, we did it on the one controller, but imagine that you need to have some kind of options which can be used or have to be available all over the application. For example, whether a current user is logged in or not logged in, or for example, whether we're using uh, some kind of different type of a catalog. To do that, uh, we are using a, a thing called context configurator. So context configurator is a, a special uh, class, a special interface and special 
class which is used to identify configuration. So let me show you a couple of examples. So here we have context configurator interface, which in fact receives context interface as uh, an argument. And here we have many and many uh, actual configurators and talking about uh, whether we are logged in or not. Here we have very simple uh, is logged in context configurator, which uh, adds a new option called is logged in. So here we can see this option name here. Here we can see the value. This token accessor has user, so it's a Boolean flag, true or false. And here we may also define the format for this option in order to not allow pass invalid values. So this one is required and this one can be only Boolean. Uh, here we're using standard Symfony resolver. So if you uh, want, you can always go check, check the Symfony resolver component in order to see how it works. Long story short, it simply allows you to set uh, the configuration structure for some component. In our case, we're using this configuration structure of the layout contexts. And uh, if you want to debug the application, you can always use command line. We have our debug layout command, which allows you to find appropriate block type, appropriate options, and so on. Let's see how it works. So here we are. I put first some command. So for, by default, it simply renders a list of all possible uh, block types and data providers. Uh, we also can see here uh, the standard context value, and we can see a list of all the configurators we have out of the box. We have just seen it in the PHP storm, but just in case, you can do it here. And you may also require request additional information. There are several options in this command. For example, we may define, we can check configuration for uh, per layout block type, we can uh, change the format, and so on. And as, as we have already seen what are block types, let's try to get some information about the block type. So let me pick that block type we have seen previously. Uh, yeah, this is it. here for example, we have product sticker block type and we can check this information here. So here we can see all the options we set, uh, we can use for this uh, block type. First, we can see the block uh, type class. Pay attention to the standard layout block because we use standard configurable block type. Here we have the inheritance. So we can see that product sticker block is inherited from the uh, just block. And here we can see all the options. Pay attention that there are some options which were not defined in the uh, YAML file during the definition. It all other options, which are not these three, were inherited from the parent block from this block. So options called uh, mode, position, and stickers are defined in the configuration for this specific block. All the other options are inherited from the parent block from this one. Let us continue. So here we have checked the first uh, data container or first uh, container with the information which we can use in the layout structure. And the second one is layout data. So layout data is an actual data which you want to render. Actual products, uh, menu items, uh, shopping lists, and so on and so on. So this is additional data which does not affect a layout structure. It's affect only the content inside the blocks. Uh, uh, there are several ways to get the product data or to pass the product data to the layout structure. So uh, the first way is the con using the controller. We have seen this one shortly already, but let me show it again. Here, this is the same action we have seen previously in the controller. We have a special option called data. And everything passed as a data will be available inside uh, the layout and you can use it and pass it to the layout options. So let me return to the configuration for some block. For example, here it is. Here we have a block name called URL and we are setting options called item and passing the data. 
So here we have the data, we have the key inside this data, and we have some kind of methods because it's data provider. But in general, you, it's not required. You may pass only the data here. For example, in this specific case, we open it again. So here we have the entity. We may uh, open this uh, bundle and see how this entity is used there. Let us do it. So this is the controller. Uh, the one from the front end, of course. So here we can see all the structure one more time. And now we need to find where and how this option is used. And the most commonly it's used inside the appropriate uh, route directory. So now we need to go and find that place. Uh, resources, views, layouts, theme. Most commonly it's either blank or the default. Let's check the default. And we can find here our action, the one called our customer front end customer user, user address index. Customer user address index, here it is. And here we have layout update. Unfortunately, in this case, we don't have a direct reference. It means it's used uh, in one of the uh, imports here. But one way or the other, you may use it in this place and use it as any other options. Let me check some other containers just to be sure and show you a good example of data usage. Yeah, for example, here we have it. This one is for the role, but no difference. Here, the way how we can pass uh, this data to the option of the specific block. Equals data, entity. That is it. And there is a second way how you can pass the data via the data provider. So the problem with uh, the way passing data from the controller is the same as with the context. There are some uh, pages which may uh, require information every time you want to enter the page. Again, it's a header, it's footer, some kind of list of the shopping lists, and so on and so on. And to do that, we have to use thing called data providers. So again, like uh, the controllers, they're providing actual data, not the context data, but they always have to have a methods to get this data. And it has to be universally big with get, has, or is, because uh, data providers must not change state of the application. Data providers is just a service in the Symfony dependency injection container, which is used uh, to tell application uh, first, the name of data provider or alias. Here we have the alias XXX. And uh, then this uh, data can, this data provider, provider can be accessed in the layout updates using this alias. Let's have a look at a couple of examples. So first we have our provider class is just a PHP class without any interface, but with a couple of the methods in order to pass uh, value to the layout update. Here, for example, we have a single unit mode single unit mode code visible and get default unit code. So these are just public methods which returns some values. They may have arguments or may not have arguments, no big difference here. Then we have registered it in the services CML file, which is just a uh, dependency injection container service. Here we can see the definition, we have the class, we have the arguments, and finally we have our tag called layout data provider with the alias called or product single unit it means that in the layout update, now we can use uh, data or a product single unit mode dot method name. So we can call some method using the standard Symfony uh, expression syntax. And this is the example. So here we have data, alias of our layout uh, provider or product single unit mode is single unit mode. So in other words, value from this method, or result of this method will be uh, put to the value of option code single unit mode. And as you can see, there are quite a lot of such usage, uh, usages of data providers all over the application. For example, here we have our product form, here we have data fixture and so on. In general, this is a standard uh, Symfony expression syntax. So you may use uh, dot notation here, you may use se several dots if you want to. Uh, you may use ternary operators, you can use or here and basically use just standard, all the standard features of Symfony expression language. In case you will forget something, here we have documentation about data providers. And uh, yes, you can always get information about the data providers using the or debug layout command. Let us check it. 
So let us pick that uh, layout data provider again. This one, or probably the single unit mode. And now we can pass not type option, but provider option. And here we can see all the methods which can be used and how to use them in the layout updates. So the name or the alias, the PHP class, which is associated with this layout update and the list of public methods which can be used in the uh, layout updates. So here we have how to use uh, e-single unit mode, how to use e-single unit mode code visible and how to use get default unit code. What you can do is just uh, copy this value and use it in your layout updates. And we have uh, the layout imports. So uh, layout import is a way to inject the same tree or the same uh, piece of the tree several times to the same page. Like we have discussed, it can be grid rows, it can be the same listing and so on. The very good example of uh, such uh, multiple imports on the home page of the our commerce application. Let me open it. Here we can see featured product listing. Here we can see new arrivals listing and here we can see top selling items listing. As you can see, they look pretty much identical, but they have different content. And in fact, all these three lists were added using the uh, imports. So we are simply importing the same uh, block several times and we are able to uh, render it several times with the different options. In our case, we're rendering it with the different uh, content because we're passing different products in order to render appropriate products in different sections. Let us have a look how layouts work and how layouts are organized. Uh, layout has to have a custom namespace, which is used in order to identify, uh, in order to generate a unique block name. And they also, as any block, they have custom options. Let's have a look. So here we have our products list, and this is the name of the uh, import used to render those three lists. Configuration is simple enough. So here we have exactly the same uh, definition structure. We have the actions, we have the options. Just one more thing, we have a special placeholder called double underscore. And this placeholder called double underscore will be replaced with the real block name later uh, when the block will be generated. When we will go to the debugging of the uh, listing page and the debugging of the uh, layout structure, we'll see how it works. And pay attention that layout may also impact another layout. So here, or layout, sorry, import can import another um, block, another import. So imports can be reused several times and import may use another import. So here we have import called or product list uses import called or product list item. And they uh, also have a root. So a root is a block which used uh, as a source of tree which will be embedded or which will be rendered. So in other words, uh, the custom tree or imported tree will be rendered starting from this block. And in most cases, you have to create a block in order to use imports because uh, the tree has to be imported from some block or the tree has to be imported into some block in order to be rendered properly. Then we have the actual usage of it. So here we already, we have seen this one already, uh, we have seen already this file before, but uh, just in case, here we have new URL CML. Now this is a file in the ORA frontend shoot. So this is not an import file any longer, this is an actual layout update. But still we can see here imports, we are adding here block called, uh, or we're importing here uh, import with ID or product list we are importing it into the container called new arrival products container. Pay attention that it was added here. And we are using namespace new arrival. It means that all the blocks inside this container will be started from the new arrival underscore blah, blah, blah. And this uh, suffix we have already seen this will, will be uh, everything replaced uh, where double underscore will be replaced with this namespace. 
just in case you forgot or you need more information about uh, the layout imports or how they work, you can always refer to the Aura commercial documentation and see how it works. You can see here the structure, you can see how to reuse them, you can uh, check what is number on the score and how it's used here. So as you can see, there is a special root parameter, which is basically defines the root of uh, the import and so on. Uh, I would propose to have a break here. And uh, before doing that, let me check the list of questions in order to answer them. Uh, okay, so we have uh, at least two questions about the slides and video to recordings from yesterday. Thank you very much, guys. I will check it after the training and uh, I hopefully they will be sent to you. Uh, then we have a question, can you have as many themes as you want? Are there any limitations? Uh, there are no limitations. You may have as many, theme, as many themes as you want, um, but uh, the name of the theme has to be unique because application has to identify which theme is currently set on each website. And you can reuse the same, th same, same theme on different websites too. Uh, question, how to manage head, for example, add custom HTML block to head tag, how layout update files and page duty is ordered to apply. So uh, first, if you want to manage head, you have to add appropriate layout update and add appropriate block to the head. Uh, we will see it when we go to the debugging of layout updates because there we will see all the structure, but in general, it's just like adding a block to another block. Let me show you to you again. So when we have seen example of the block, uh, nope, not this one. We need a default theme. Give me a second, please. Yeah, so here you can see the head block and what you can do, you simply add a new block inside this block because every time you're adding a block, you're adding it to some existing block as a container. So here the head is a container and you may add your own block to the head and will be rendered out there before specific block, after specific block or between the blocks. You can specify this behavior using the options. Uh, next question, how to how layout update files in page directory is ordered to apply. Uh, they have merged and they merged based on the uh, order of the bundles. So uh, if you want to render, or if you want to add some uh, layout update after your, after existing layout update, you have to make sure that your bundle is loaded after the bundle, which adds original layout update and vice versa. Another question, can the blocks be scheduled to appear or disappear both in certain conditions and time periods? Yes, we have a condition. So you may specify a condition which uh, when they will appear or when they will not appear. Uh, we will check it a little bit uh, later uh, today. In fact, this will be our uh, next slide for about the old conditions. And uh, disappear based on the certain conditions uh, and time periods. So for conditions, yes, you can do it. And as for the time periods, uh, it really depends on the use case. Uh, because if uh, your time period is something which changes the uh, layout structure, for example, you want to add a special block for the Black Friday, uh, then yes, you may create a new layout uh, context variable and then use this layout context variable in the condition. Or if it must not change layout structure, you may simply put uh, this if or if else condition inside your Twig template and you will just use this standard, symbol, uh, standard symphony Twig uh, if else, else if and so on in order to render uh, appropriate information. Uh, okay, another question. Can we add blocks directly in Twig file without adding anything in the config file CML? No, you have to have at least one config file in order to tell application that this file has to be rendered. So you have to define at least this section. In fact, let me check it. I think there were a couple of such uh, examples. Um, do we? Okay, but in general here we have very simple, a very similar example. You may just remove this line and put only this code. 
Uh, by doing that, you will tell application that this file has to be loaded and parsed, and then the appropriate templates will be used to render appropriate blocks. Okay, so we have no more questions for now. Let's have a 15 minute break and we'll con continue from there. Okay, guys, let us continue. Uh, before we'll start, let me remind you that uh, here is the channel where you can download and see again all the videos uh, from this training, from our most trainings. And uh, as you can see here, we already have a training from the yesterday. And I have posted these links to the Zoom group chat too, so feel free to use it if you want to check it again. As for the slides, I will check it after the training. So let us continue, let us see <coughs> layout updates and let's continue that, uh, observe the features we have uh, out of the box and layout engine. So the next feature called layout conditions and we already have a question about it in chat. Uh, so there was a question how to uh, show or not show some parts of the uh, layout or layout updates based on the layout conditions. And uh, here we have a way to do it. So layout conditions are defined in the layout update file. So conditions restrict all the layout updates on the same file. Uh, conditions, of course, must be satisfied in order for layout update to be executed. And layout conditions can use only context variable. So this is the restriction that we have there in the separation between the uh, layout context and layout data. And because layout condition may affect uh, the structure of the layout, they can use only layout context variables. And of course, you can use standard expressions like and or in order to combine conditions and make it work. Let's have a look at some examples. Here we have the breadcrumbs on the product view page and this option, that option breadcrumbs will be used only if we have a web catalog. In our case here we have web catalog ID not equals null. Another example, here we have customer address count. So remember that customer address count variable we have passed uh, from the address uh, control from the customer controller. Here is how you can use it. You can use customer address controller in order to render different structures for the different uh, configuration options. And here, if we have less or equal than three customer addresses, we will execute this layout updates. There is one more trick which you can use if you want to hide uh, some uh, block. There is an option called visible available on all the standard blocks and you may pass here some expression. For example, here data ACL is granted. So this one will be visible only if we have appropriate uh, permission on the storefront. And if you will pass these options and set this value to false, this block simply will not be rendered. Now, how to use layouts from controller. We have seen this one already, but let me remind you one more time. Uh, you have to use special add layout annotation on the control in the controller. And there you can pass uh, layout context variables and layout data variables directly from it. So here we have add layout annotation. We are passing variables, so these are context variables. Here we're passing the values for those context variables. And finally, we are passing the data. So data here is a special key and you have to pass, uh, you may pass multiple values under this key here. So here we're passing entities. Uh, here we're passing only data. We do not have here any layout, um, any layout context variables. And you may check all of the controls in order to see how it works. Now let's move to the debugging. So this is where the interesting part is started. So there are several ways and several things which you can use in order to debug layouts. Uh, there are four main uh, entry points or four main things which you can use in order to debug. So these are Symfony Developers Trubal, Symfony Twig Inspector, and Theme Listener and Layout Listener. 
Uh, let's start from the checkers theme and layout listeners. So theme listener is simply responsible for setting the current theme. So remember that configuration option we have seen before or front-end front -end theme. So here is how it's passed and here is how it's used. So uh, here is where we extract it from the config manager and we setting it to the special variable on the uh, request level called underscore theme plate in the attributes uh, parameter bag. And you can use uh, this variable if you want to understand the current theme set in the request level. And we have layout listener and layout listener is a place where layout execution or layout rendering is initiated and processed. Here we have on kernel view uh, listener, listener to the kernel view event of Symfony. We are checking here that we had not have uh, the template because template and layout are technically uh, conflicting each with other and we are not allowing to have both of them together. And uh, then we are collecting the context And we are, we are collecting the context, we are creating our layout, and we are simply rendering this layout later. So we have new response with the layout rendered here. Oh, there is another way how you can do it. You may use layout builder with the layout manager uh, and pass the options, pass the context, pass the parameters, and again, simply uh, generate response. Uh, you will not generate, you will not customize this uh, place in your development, uh, but you may put a breakpoint here in order to debug, in order to understand uh, how the auto is generated, what kind of context they passed, what kind of variables they, uh, uh, each page use, and so on. So just a convenient uh, place to debug. Uh, now let's move to the Symfony debug and see how to debug the themes. And finally, <laughs> we'll be able to see uh, our structure of a blocks in order to debug them. Let me open application. I will need it to open in the uh, dev mode, of course. And here we may see the structure of all blocks on our page. So here is the structure. The structure is quite big as you can see, because we have quite a lot of blocks on the home page, And we can see all the blocks we have seen before and all the blocks which were added to this page. So here we have, for example, title block, meta chairs block, styles block, special icons block, uh, scripts block. Then we have our body with the container, with the menu, with the logo. Uh, here we may also find our new arrivals. So here we can see new arrivals, product container, new arrivals, product, new arrival, product, product box, product, and so on. And as you can see, all of them have that new arrival prefix, which is coming from the import. And this is how application is managing uh, that on the block level. So you can see here, so all this tree, which currently uh, prefixed with yellow is the part of that new arrival uh, template. And here we see the footer, we see the footer info, we see the footer menu, we also have some layout rendered in the very bottom. We have bottom CK panel and so on. For each of the block here on the right side, we can see the possible options and possible configuration used there. For example, here we have a logo block. And first we can see the prefixes, which you can use in the uh, files, in the um, twig files in order to customize this block looks like. Again, this is very similar to the block names used by the form types. So it can be either parent underscore widget or specific block underscore widget or just underscore block. It means it's only a specific block only in this place. And here we also see all the variables which passed to our template, whether it's visible, what kind of translation domain is used, class, prefix, ID, cache key, whether it's hidden or not, render link, route, and we also have here some parameter. In our case, it's SRC, it's data asset, get URL, data theme, get local context uh, theme structure. And just in case, we can also see block, block prefixes. These are pretty much the same thing as we have seen here with, without the widget suffix. We may also see here not applied actions. Uh, this one is especially uh, useful if you are uh, debugging the page or adding your own layout updates. And if for some reason, for example, parent block does not exist, this action won't be applied and you will be able to see uh, this not applied actions here. And finally, we can see the context. We can see the data, we can see the 
parameters, we can see the variables and so here or there. For example, here we have is logged in uh, context variable we have checked during uh, the training and so you can see the value is false. Uh, we can see the page template is the default one. We can see whether it's debug mode or not debug mode. We can see the route name, in fact it's a part of the uh, context too and so on. And finally we can see where you have to put your uh, file with layout updates in order to be applied on this page. So it has to be either resources uh, views layouts default or front-end root, which is the current root, or page. It means that this layout update will be applied for all pages, not only for the root page. Uh, next useful thing is called Twig Inspector, and Twig Inspector can be used in order to see uh, the blocks and block structure on the HTML level. Let me demonstrate that. So if I open uh, the element structure here and I will debug some element. Uh, first, uh, here you will not see any additional information about the block, mostly because everything is disabled. However, uh, in the system configuration, you may enable an option called uh, debugging info. Let me show it where it's done. So here we have include block debug info into the HTML. And by doing that, application will automatically add a special parameters. And so you as a developer can understand what specific file is used to uh, render some block. And for example, here we have the file called or web catalog layouts blank page menu HTML tweak. It means that this file was used to uh, render this specific block. And you may find it for every standard tag or every standard block or, or the application. And we can obviously enable our um, tweak inspector. It's disabled by default. And let's wait a second. Uh, let, yeah. So now we can see the page is reloaded and now you can see the special text, the additional meta information rendered in this block, which tell us which specific block is rendered in which file in order to understand uh, the block structure on the HTML level. So for example, here we can uh, inspecting uh, our logo and we can see it's a part of the logo widget block, which rendered here. So here's additional information which you may use uh, and you may in fact set up PHP Storm in order to redirect directly to this link if you want to. So this is additional information which you as a developer can use to understand the block structure, understand how the structure built, understand what kind of uh, and where each specific uh, block is stored and will simplify your life a lot because in this way you will know where to debug, where to put breakpoint, how to uh, understand how data is passed and so on and so on. And now a couple of the best practices about the uh, layouts and theme usage. So uh, we usually recommend to keep theme in the separate bundle and put there all the standard styles and all the elements. Uh, by standard styles and elements, I mean uh, the elements which, elements which are available on every possible page and the elements which can be reused all over the application. So these are styles, these are standard images, these are standard icons and so on. If you have a separate bundle, for example, that adds new features and does not add a theme, it may refer to this theme, but it should not uh, involve new styles or new visual elements. So responsibility, let's keep responsibility, responsibility separate and use the separate bundle only for the theme and visual presentation and another bundle for the business logic and business features. Another thing, uh, don't be afraid to make big blocks with big templates. So yes, you have seen a very, very complicated structure. Let me show you again. So yes, you have seen this huge block structure. In fact, so, yeah, so here it is. But in many cases, it may not be needed. So this is an out of the box structure. It's so big because uh, our commerce is very flexible and we are allowing to inject your 
custom block and custom uh, field to custom information in every possible place and every possible block. But if you're doing customization and you do not need this kind of extendability and this kind of flexibility in your code, you may simply create a very big block with lots of uh, HTML inside and put it there. Just make sure that it receives all the required information and all the options. Uh, next thing about data providers. Data providers must not change the state of the application. They are read-only. It's not their purpose. That's why there was a remark there that they have to have only is, uh, get, and this kind of other methods which not change the data. If you need some business data inside the template and there is no easy way to pass, there is no easy way to get this information there, uh, from the controller, you may create a new data provider and proxy uh, appropriate calls of the appropriate service methods. Yes, it may be partial violation of MVC, but uh, this is like uh, a last solution, last resort. If you have no other ways to do it, you may do it like that. It's not really good from the architectural point of view, but it's uh, do the trick. And that's all about the theory. Let's check the new questions in chat. Uh, what cache levels there are? There are full page cache and placeholders and varnish configuration. No, we have a cache on the layout structure level. So we are caching the structure of the block based on the content of the context. So application creates a hash or generates a cache based on the context values, not only because parameters and context values, and stores a tree layout tree structure there. So it's not built from scratch every time. It's simply uh, refreshed, extracted from cache every time you need the page. But the content, yes, content is aside from database. Uh, we do not have uh, any integration with Varnish out of the box and do not have any placeholders, but if you want, you may use H side includes. In fact, uh, you may think about if every block as an H side include block or H side include uh, tag, and then you can use it together with Varnish. Uh, next question, can we add block visibility control to the Oro admin console, like the marketing team wants control display, hide the block on the page? Yes, you can do it. You may, for example, uh, set a option in the system configuration. For example, it will be just checkbox, show some block or hide some block, and then refer to it in the appropriate layout block. Uh, let me check, for example, I think we have something like that. We just need to find... Uh, we just need to find the name of the layout update responsible for that. So let me check data provider, system config provider, system config provider, and let me check if we have something in the YAML files. Yeah, so here is the uh, good example of uh, such customization. We have adding a block and we have option visible, which visible when only if we have filter value selector in the system configuration set to all at once. Or for example, here we have enable options which passed directly from the system configuration and so on. So this system configuration provider is the standard layout data provider which allows you to get information from system configuration. So if you want to rely on some information system configuration, you may always use this config provider. However, if you do not like system configuration and you want to use some kind of other data source, feel free to implement data provider for it, add method like is feature enabled and simply pass it as uh, the value for the visible option or uh, you may even sometimes refer to it in the condition and the context like here we have is logged in. In this case you have to create your own context configurator and add appropriate value to the context. Again the difference which one um, which approach is better depends on whether this data affects structure of the box or not. If it affects the structure of the box it has to be part of the context. If, if it does not affect the structure it can be a data provider. Okay, uh, and how these caches affect data and context. So we, they, uh, as I have already mentioned, the context is used to generate a hash 
for our cache. So basically the key for our cache. And data is extracted every time you're rendering a page. But if you want, you may use the standard data level cache uh, and inject it to your real data providers and use it instead of uh, getting data every time uh, from database. Okay, so if you have no other questions, let's check the example. Let's say there's some kind of small exercise and see how it can be done. So here is, we have a small practice session. If you want, you can practice it yourself without looking uh, at the example, but here I'm going to sh tell you uh, what you may want to do and then show you how to do it. So here's a small exercise. We need to add a small bundle called training first theme bundle. We need to add a theme called first. So it's the name of the uh, theme or key of the theme, extended from the default theme. We need to replace website logo and optionally we may also replace Favicon if you want to. Uh, you need to add new layout element that adds some text string under the logo. And then we may add a data provider, turn on current weather information, it can be even hard coded, and add this weather information to home page between the featured categories and the featured products. And finally, we need to add product ID block, the product role of the product data grid. Yeah, we need to put it directly under the SQ, and this is how it may look like. Now, first, let's have a look at the result, and then let's check step by step how to do that. I have a separate installation for that. Let me open this one. Training, or commerce, local, this one. Okay, so here we have application in dev mode and we have already seen that we have a custom team play, a custom logo here. We have an additional hint under the logo as it was required. We have a special block called current weather is okay. And as you can see here in the listing, we see the uh, new information about the IDs because we added it not only to the listings, but not only to the grids, but also to the listings. Let's have a look at the structure of the layout blocks. Okay, the list of blocks is loading. Yep, it's here. And let's start from the logo. So here we have our logo, and in our case, it's just standard logo without any additional change, but uh, we'll see how it was important a little bit later. However, you can see here a new block called logo hint, and this is a actual customization we did here in order to add those small information to the logo. Let me show it again. This first logo hint thing. Then we have weather information. And here we have weather info block. And as you can see here, we have been using special data provider called training first uh, team weather, which calls method called get weather text. So this is how it was done on the structure level. And let's now let's see the code. Pay attention that there is no uh, special change for adding this ID information because it may not be even the block, it may be configuration of the layout template. Uh, let's check. Just in case, here you have the repository. It's the same repository which was used for the platform uh, training. You may uh, find the appropriate branch here and see uh, how to do it. And if you want, you can use it as a reference. So first the bundle, it's pretty straightforward. Just the bundle with the dependency injection. And this one is used only to load our service CML. Uh, let's check step by step what has to be done and how it was done. So first we need to uh, add a new theme called first extended from the default theme. Let's see. Theme is defined in the resources uh, layouts directory. And as you can see here, we have directory called first. And inside it, we have a theme file. Here we have theme YAML. And here we have definition for this theme. 
pay attention that here we have a separate file for logo and separate file for icon. And if you define these options here, application will automatically get these files and use them. Pay attention that here we have special A logo, Acme logo on uh, the header. So it's a fab icon. And here we have the Acme logo directly here in the template. Then the next requirements, we have to add new layout element that adds some text string under the logo. So this one, uh, this customization is needed for all pages. It means that it has to be put into the page directory and let us check it. So here we have logo YAML. Uh, we are setting block theme in order application to parse this file and apply the change from it. And we are adding new blog block called logo hint to the parent block called middleball logo sibling id it means it will be added after this block and block type is just block because we do not need any additional options there so let us have a look again into the structure of that page this one Here we have a middle bar logo container. So it's a parent container or parent block. Here we added logo hint block and we added after the logo block. So as you can see, we have added block uh, called logo hint inside the middle bar, bar logo container after the logo. This is exactly what we have defined here in this file. And now finally, let's check the logo HTML twig. It's a very simple and straightforward file. It's just prefix for this specific widget, logo hint widget, and some information, just a plain HTML. If we will have a look at the configuration for this logo block hint, we will see this information here, logo hint widget, and this is exactly the name of the block we can see here. So this is how you can uh, inject a piece of the HTML into existing uh, layout structure. Next, uh, we need to add new data provider to return some current information about the weather. So as we have already checked, the uh, layout data provider is just a standard PHP file registered in the dependency injection container. Uh, the recommended path for these files is layout data provider. So we are following this convention all over the application and I would recommend to, for you to do the same. And here is our Path. Here is our structure, and it's a pretty straightforward, very simple class with one method called get what text, which returns some value. And of course, in order to use them in layout updates, we have to register it in the uh, service and dependency injection container. So here we have services YAML. And here we have registered using the tag called layout data provider and training first theme uh, weather is the alias for this block. Of course, you may check the configuration for this block uh, using the already debug uh, layout command line common. And we have defined the layout update. We have defined, uh, we have created layout update class. We have defined in, in the services AML what we are missing now. We are missing that one block. Let me show it again. This is it. Pay attention that this block is added to only to the home page, so it has to be stored inside the order front end root, the route name, uh, responsible for this page. Let us back to the layout structure. And here we have order front end root directory, and here we have small file called weather.yml. Here we are adding small block with a type text. Uh, ID of new block is weather info. Parent block, so the container which will contain this block called page content. Sibling ID, it means the block it will be rendered after called featured categories container. And here we have the option called text, which simply tells us to use our layout update, uh, layout data provider in this layout update and render weather text. Let's try to find this block again in the configuration here. Here is our block. Here we can see information. Here we can see all the options. And we can also see the option called text, which tells us that uh, the value for this block 
has to be extracted from the, our data provider called training first team provider. And that's it. Um, next option we have, next requirement we have, we need to add product ID block to the product role of the product data grid. So here is the tricky part. This is the part uh, where we need to work with the imports because when we're adding something, we're adding, it, adding multiple items there, we're adding them via the import. Let us check how it's done. Again, we need to go to the, our directory section. And here we can see the imports directory, imports or product list item. Uh, product list item, let me remind you, is the layout update responsible for rendering one list item in that listing. And here we have layout update itself. And here we are adding a new block called product ID, block type block. Uh, inside the container called product specification, and after the block called product SKU. And here we can see that it's simply a very, very simple HTML without anything special. Just one more interesting thing, it's a product ID variable. It's a very standard variable which we, uh, application uses in this block. And because this block is about another block, it can also reuse this variable. Let's try to find this block in the structure. Uh, nope, not this one. We need to find the block called product ID. Yeah, so here we can see it. We have see featured product ID, which added for the featured products block. We have new arrival product ID, which, which added for the new arrival uh, import. And then we have top selling product ID, which was added for the top selling uh, import. So just let me remind you that we have three listings featured products, new arrivals, and top selling, and all of them have uh, this ID added to directly to this box. And that's all, guys. Uh, if you have some questions, feel free to post them to the chat. Let me check it. Uh, we have a question. How does able caching for a block to making data from data object every page reloading. Um, as I have already mentioned, data is always extracted every time you're rendering the page. So it works like that by default. If you do not like that, you have to add some kind of decorator or additional wrapper to use the data level cache. But data level, um, data is not cached, only the, uh, data is not cached, only the context and uh, the structure is cached but it's cached only in prod mode. So every time you're changing something in prod mode, you have to refresh the cache. But if you're working in dev mode, you should not care about that application will uh, scan uh, your directories and your custom bundle. And if you're changing something, the changes will be applied immediately. Yes, it will regenerate the cache again, but uh, still you will not need to do, need, need to call any uh, command from command line in order to do that. Okay, guys, uh, so it looks like we have no more questions for now. Um, in this case, thank you very much for today. Let me remind you that tomorrow uh, we are going to have uh, business topics about the products catalog and web catalogs. So feel free to invite your uh, PO, BAs, uh, marketing specialists and other people from business department in order to listen what kind of features we have uh, in order like to do the products and catalogs. Thank you very much, guys. Have a good day and bye.